From heartbreaks to personal losses, Connie Stevens' journey was stormy, marked by profound challenges that ultimately shaped her destiny. Through rare archival footage, exclusive interviews, and expert analysis, we'll uncover the untold stories and reveal the hidden depths of this Hollywood legend. Come along for an enthralling ride as we trace Connie's ascent from humble origins to household fame. I don't know. <laughs> How old am I? Mesmerizing audiences with her undeniable talent and magnetic charisma. So let's dive in real quick. In the beginning, Connie Stevens, originally known as Conchetta Rosalie Ann Ingolia, took her first breath on August 8, 1938. Born into a lineage of musical talent, her transition from urban streets to the dazzling glamour of Hollywood is a narrative infused with both success and adversity. Brooklyn's rhythms were her playground until fate intervened at the tender age of 12. After a troubling experience where she witnessed a murder while waiting at the bus stop in Brooklyn, Connie Stevens decided to move to the peaceful countryside of Missouri, seeking comfort and support from her family and friends. Yet destiny had already set its sights on her, guiding her to the City of Angels at just 15 years old, where her star began to ascend. Early growth and career kickoff. Connie hails from a diverse heritage with roots tracing back to both Italian and Irish descent. She embraced her father's surname, adopting it as her own. However, her familial journey was not devoid of challenges. Her parents' separation led her to reside with her grandparents, shaping her upbringing amidst the backdrop of Catholic boarding schools. Within this intricate family dynamic, she shared a bond with her half-brother, the actor John Megna. Inheriting a love for music, Connie found solace and expression by joining The Foremost, a singing group led by Tony. Little did she know, her journey intertwined with individuals who would later ascend to fame. Tony went on to establish The Letterman. In 1957, Connie graced the silver screen for the first time in Young and Dangerous, igniting a passion that would shape her future. The following year, her debut album Conchetta marked the dawn of a new chapter, blending her acting prowess with her musical talents. Soon, Hollywood beckoned with open arms, offering roles in iconic films like Rockabye Baby and The Party Crashers, where her performances shimmered alongside legendary counterparts. But the small screen truly embraced her, casting her as Cricket Blake in the beloved series Hawaiian Eye. As her television presence blossomed, so did her musical career, with her enchanting voice soaring to the top of the charts with the mesmerizing hit 16 Reasons. Connie embarked on her cinematic journey with her breakthrough role in Young and Dangerous in 1957, alongside Mark Damon, marking her debut in the film industry. Following this, she showcased her talent in 18 and Anxious in that same year, and also made a memorable appearance in an episode of The Bob Cummings Show titled Bob Goes Hillbilly. In December of the same year, Connie inked a significant seven-year contract with Paramount Pictures, commencing at a modest $600 per week and escalating to $1,500 per week. This pivotal move solidified her commitment to her burgeoning acting career. Her ascent to stardom accelerated when renowned actor Jerry Lewis caught sight of her performance in Drag Strip Riot in 1958 and promptly cast her as his romantic interest in the 1958 hit movie Rockabye Baby, catapulting Connie into the spotlight. Continuing her collaboration with Mark Damon, Stevens appeared in The Party Crashers. However, despite her burgeoning success, her journey with Paramount ended unexpectedly when the studio decided to part ways with her. Her rise to film stardom and theater. Connie's rise to fame on television screens and her success as a recording artist caught the attention of Warner Brothers, attracting their interest and encouraging them to discover her abilities in the world of movies. This opportunity resulted in her appearing in three noteworthy films for the studio, all featuring heartthrob Troy Donahue. The following year, she portrayed the title character, an unwed mother in Susan Slade in 1962. Finally, in 1963, she starred in Palm Springs Weekend, a delightful teen romantic comedy. However, Connie's journey wasn't without its bumps. Warner Brothers temporarily suspended her for her reluctance to embark on a promotional tour in 1962. Despite this setback, 
she continued to captivate audiences, even gracing the stage in a rendition of Wizard of Oz in Kansas. Following the conclusion of her stint on Hawaiian Eye, Connie ventured into guest starring roles on shows like Temple Houston and The Red Skelton Show. Her versatility shone through as she took on the lead role in the 1965 spine-chilling horror flick Two on a Guillotine under the Warner Brothers. Connie's transition back to television saw her starring as Wendy Conway in the sitcom Wendy and Me from 1964 to 1965, alongside the legendary George Burns. The show, produced in collaboration with Warner Brothers, depicted a unique dynamic where Burns played an elderly man observing Wendy's escapades through a clandestine closed-circuit television set up in his apartment. Connie's involvement extended beyond acting. She held a stake in the show and still had several years left on her contract with Warner Brothers. Connie continued solidifying her presence in the film industry, securing the juvenile lead in Never Too Late in 1956, distributed by Warner Brothers. This success led her to sign a new contract with the studio, committing to one film per year for the next six years. Her journey came full circle as she revisited her roots on stage, reprising her Wizard of Oz role at the Carousel Theater in California, followed by a captivating performance in Any Wednesday at Melody Land in Anaheim, California. A reunion with Jerry Lewis in Way Way Out in 1966 marked yet another milestone in Connie's career. Top Movies During the late 1960s and early 1970s, Connie Stevens diversified her career with a series of television and film roles. She began with a modest appearance in the television movie The Littlest Angel in 1969, paving the way for subsequent projects. Exploring overseas, Connie ventured into British television with Mr. Jericho in 1970, showcasing her versatility on an international stage. Her talents shone through in the crime drama The Grissom Gang in 1971, where she delivered a compelling supporting performance. The small screen proved a fruitful avenue for Connie as she took on leading roles in a string of movies. From the heartwarming Call Her Mom in 1972 to the playful Playmates that same year, Connie captivated audiences with her range and charisma. Her appearances in Every Man Needs One in 1972 and The Sex Symbol in 1974 further solidified her status as a prominent figure in television. Despite her rising profile, Connie boldly declined the role of Valerie Perrine in Lenny due to its explicit nudity, opting to maintain her artistic integrity. In 1976, Connie took center stage in the feature film Scorchy, stepping into the lead role and showcasing her talent on the big screen. As the decade progressed, Connie's presence extended beyond television and film. She lent her melodic voice to the catchy theme song for Ace Hardware TV commercials in Southern California, further solidifying her status as a beloved figure in popular culture. Additionally, she made memorable appearances on the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast, adding her signature charm to the comedic proceedings. Connie's star continued to shine bright in 1977 when she graced the stage of The Muppet Show, bringing her infectious energy to the beloved variety series. In 1978, Connie embarked on a voyage aboard The Love Boat, making a guest appearance in the second season's 13th episode, further cementing her status as a versatile and enduring talent in the entertainment industry. Warner Brothers and Hawaiian Eye Contract In May 1959, Connie embarked on a significant chapter in her career by signing a lucrative seven-year contract with Warner Brothers, starting with a weekly salary of $300. Like many talents under the Warner Brothers banner, Connie found herself in high demand, frequently gracing the screens of popular television shows such as The Ann Southern Show, Maverick, Tenderfoot, 77 Sunset Strip, and Cheyenne. Her versatility and charm shone through in each role, captivating audiences and leaving a lasting impression. One memorable highlight came when Connie shared the screen with James Garner and Adam West in an episode of Maverick, titled two tickets to ten strike. However, her portrayal of Cricket Blake in the beloved Hawaiian Eye series from 1959 to 1963 catapulted her into stardom. Paired with the dynamic Robert Conrad, Connie's portrayal of Cricket Blake captured the hearts of viewers nationwide, 
establishing her as a household name. On December 23, 1960, Connie made an unforgettable appearance as Cricket Blake in The Dresden Doll, an episode of the hit series 77 Sunset Strip, further solidifying her presence in the television landscape. During a candid interview on CNN's Larry King Live on August 26, 2003, Connie shared a delightful anecdote from her time on the set of Hawaiian Eye. She recounted the surreal moment when she received a phone call purportedly from none other than Elvis Presley himself. Initially skeptical, Connie was stunned when Elvis invited her to a party and offered to pick her up. This unexpected encounter sparked a brief but enchanting courtship between Connie and the legendary king of rock and roll, adding another fascinating chapter to her storied career. Broadway and nightclubs. Connie Stevens mesmerized audiences in 1966 with her standout role in Neil Simon's The Star-Spangled Girl on Broadway, alongside acclaimed actors Anthony Perkins and Richard Benjamin. Despite her thriving television career, which included appearances on popular shows like ABC Stage 67, Rowan and Martin's Laugh-In and Love American Style, Connie found immense joy in live performances. This passion for the stage led her to venture into the vibrant world of nightclubs in Las Vegas, starting in 1968. Her live shows became a highlight of the Las Vegas entertainment scene, earning praise from enthusiastic audiences and discerning entertainment critics alike. Awards and recognition. She stood proudly honored with stars adorning not just one, but three walks of fame. From the palm-lined streets of Palm Springs, California, to the iconic Hollywood Boulevard in Hollywood, and even the illustrious Italian Walk of Fame in Toronto, her legacy shines bright for all to see. In a remarkable career milestone, on September 23, 2005, Connie assumed the position of secretary-treasurer within the Screen Actors Guild, solidifying her influence within the entertainment industry. This transition followed the tenure of James Cromwell, who opted not to pursue re-election. Beyond her stellar acting achievements, Connie's unwavering dedication to patriotic service shines brightly. On June 29, 2013, Marianne Wright, President General of the National Society of Daughters of the American Revolution, presented Stevens with the Distinguished Founders Medal for Patriotism. This prestigious accolade recognized her tireless efforts spanning over four decades with the USO, underscoring her profound commitment to supporting the nation's armed forces. Behind the Lens Connie embarked on an exciting new adventure in filmmaking by trying her hand at directing. This bold move made her step beyond her established roles as an actress and singer, showcasing her multifaceted talents. Her directorial journey kicked off with the creation of her debut feature film, Saving Grace B. Jones, in 2009. It was a momentous occasion in her career, marking a significant milestone and demonstrating her artistic versatility. Before delving into feature filmmaking, Stevens had already made waves in the documentary genre with her work on A Healing back in 1997. However, it was with Saving Grace B. Jones that she truly made her mark as a director. At age 70, she embarked on this ambitious project, breaking barriers and proving that age is no obstacle to pursuing one's passions. In interviews, Stevens expressed immense pride in her accomplishment, highlighting the uniqueness of female directors taking on such endeavors at her stage in life. Despite the challenges she faced, Stevens remained undeterred, fueled by her unwavering determination and creative vision. Her journey into directing not only showcased her talent behind the camera, but also served as an inspiration to aspiring filmmakers everywhere. With her sights set on New Horizons, Stevens envisioned further cinematic ventures, including the prospect of directing another film titled Prairie Bones. While this project has yet to come to fruition, Stevens' bold foray into directing has left an indelible impression on the industry, cementing her legacy as a trailblazer and creative force to be reckoned with. Other Projects Connie Stevens is a modern-day marvel, embodying the essence of a Renaissance woman with timeless allure and multifaceted talents. Connie's repertoire knows no bounds, from captivating audiences as a film star, filmmaker, and television sensation, to gracing Broadway stages with her acting prowess, enchanting concert halls with her performances, 
and topping charts as a recording artist. Yet, amidst her achievements, she effortlessly takes on the roles of a smart business person, caring mom and hardworking volunteer, showing how much she cares and works. Her venture, The Garden Sanctuary, emerges as a natural evolution of her remarkable journey. Situated amidst the glitz and glamour of Los Angeles, this executive day spa and boutique reflects Connie's commitment to luxury and sophistication. Drawing inspiration from the principles that propelled her cosmetics empire to greatness, the Garden Sanctuary offers a lavish array of services and indulgent treatments, promising clients a sanctuary of relaxation and rejuvenation. Its classy store and peaceful garden vibe make it a calm oasis in the busy city. In 1969, Connie embarked on a heartfelt journey as she joined the esteemed Bob Hope USO Tour, bringing comfort and entertainment to Guam and Southeast Asia troops. In 1987, Connie, alongside luminaries Barbara Eden and Lee Greenwood, continued her philanthropic endeavors by participating in Bob Hope's USO Tour to the Persian Gulf, spreading joy and camaraderie to servicemen and women abroad. Beyond her illustrious career, Connie is deeply committed to charitable causes. She founded the Windfeather Project, which is dedicated to providing scholarships to Native Americans and actively supports CancerGroup.com in its mission to combat cancer. Recognition for her humanitarian efforts was followed by prestigious awards such as the Lady of Humanities Award from Shriners Hospital in 1991 and the Humanitarian of the Year Award from the Sons of Italy in Washington, D.C. In addition to her philanthropy, Stevens ventured into beauty and wellness, creating her own cosmetic skincare line, Forever Spring. In the 1990s, she expanded her entrepreneurial pursuits by establishing the Connie Stevens Garden Sanctuary Day Spa in the heart of Los Angeles, offering a sanctuary for relaxation and rejuvenation. In 1994, Connie, accompanied by her daughters, shared the spirit of the season with her enchanting recording, Tradition, a family at Christmas, marking a joyous return to the music scene after several years. Throughout her career, she has graced the silver screen and lit up the stages of major Las Vegas showrooms, captivating audiences with her timeless talent and enduring charm. Music Career Connie's musical journey kicked off with her debut album, Conchetta, released in 1958. While it didn't skyrocket to fame, it laid the groundwork for her burgeoning career. She dipped her toes into the music scene with several singles, including renditions of timeless classics like Blame It On My Youth, Looking For A Boy, and Spring Is Here, showcasing her vocal prowess and versatility. However, her collaborations and appearances truly thrust her into the limelight. After making a splash on the popular Warner Brothers TV series 77 Sunset Strip, Connie teamed up with Ed Burns for the catchy novelty track Kooky Kooky Lend Me Your Comb in 1959. The song soared to number four on the Billboard Hot 100, solidifying Connie's position as a rising star. Their dynamic chemistry extended beyond the recording studio as they graced the stage together on ABC's The Pat Boone Chevy Showroom. As a solo artist, Connie found success with hit singles like 16 Reasons in 1960, her breakout hit that climbed to number three on the Billboard Hot 100, reaching number nine in the United Kingdom. Another notable single, Too Young to Go Steady in 1960, though a minor hit, showcased her ability to deliver emotionally resonant performances. Connie's discography continued to expand with releases such as Apollo, Why'd You Want to Make Me Cry, Something Beautiful, and Mr. Songwriter. Her love life, Connie Stevens's romantic escapades are nothing short of captivating, resembling a thrilling roller coaster ride filled with peaks and valleys. Her journey through love began in the 1960s with her marriage to actor James Stacy. This union eventually ended in divorce. However, love found its way back to her when she tied the knot with the talented Eddie Fisher, her second husband. Although their marriage also ended in separation, it endowed them the precious gift of two beautiful daughters, Jolie and Trisha Lee Fisher. Delving into Connie's romantic entanglements reveals a treasure trove of notable names and figures, including Glenn Ford, Elvis Presley, and Bob Neal. Each relationship adds a layer of intrigue to her captivating love life, 
vividly depicting her journey through the years. For those intrigued by the complexities of celebrity romance, Connie Stevens found herself entwined in captivating romances with some of the most notable figures of her time. In the 1950s, she crossed paths with John McCain, a distinguished Vietnam War hero who later became a prominent United States Senator at a political event. Their unexpected connection sparked intrigue, drawing the attention of tabloids and leaving readers eager for more insights into their romance. In the mid-1960s, Bill Medley and Connie Stevens found common ground in the music industry, igniting rumors of a passionate romance. While the details of their relationship timeline remain unknown, their mutual love for music undoubtedly strengthened their bond. During the late 1960s, Connie Stevens was also linked with the legendary king of rock and roll, Elvis Presley. Their flirtatious encounters at glamorous Hollywood parties captured headlines, though it's unclear if their connection blossomed into a full-blown romance. After Connie broke up with Elvis, she got into a relationship with Gardner McKay. Their whirlwind romance became tabloid fodder after they were introduced at a Beverly Hills event. Despite its brevity, their love story left a lasting impression before coming to an end. Hollywood Connie later fell for the charismatic Glenn Ford on the set of Pocket Full of Miracles. Their passionate affair lit up headlines but ultimately fizzled out after a few months. Connie Stevens was also swept off her feet by Neil Armstrong, the iconic astronaut. Their love for each other sparked at a glitzy event in 1972, added an intriguing chapter to their storied lives, leaving a lasting impression on admirers worldwide. Like mother, like daughters. Jolie Fisher, her first daughter, born October 29, 1967, inherited her mother's passion for acting and quickly made a name for herself in the entertainment industry. With her infectious personality and undeniable talent, she starred in TV shows like Ellen and Desperate Housewives, lighting up the stage in theater productions. Trisha Lee Fisher, Connie's other daughter, born December 26, 1968, also followed in her mother's footsteps, carving out her own path in show business. With her unique flair and versatility, Trisha graced television screens in popular series like Growing Pains and One Life to Live, showcasing her talent to audiences worldwide. Jolie and Trisha carried their mother's legacy throughout their careers, honoring her influence with every performance. Together, they formed a formidable trio of talented women, each leaving their mark on the entertainment world in their own unforgettable way. And as the lights dimmed on Hollywood stage, Connie Stevens' legacy lives on through her beloved daughters, Jolie Fisher and Trisha Lee Fisher, who are forever remembered for their contributions to the magic of showbiz. Connie Stevens cherishes her role as a grandmother, boasting eight grandchildren through her daughters, Jolie and Trisha Lee Fisher. She had a stroke. In an interview with Entertainment Tonight, Connie openly discussed a challenging experience, revealing that she had spent about 16 days in the hospital, unable to walk or move her left side. This was because she had suffered a stroke. She mentioned during the interview that she could now walk and relax at the pool daily. Referring to her mother's stroke, Fisher, her daughter, also shared reflections in a 2021 interview with Closer. She mentioned how her mother had nearly succumbed to a stroke. Despite the seriousness of the situation, Fisher noted her mother's resilience. She mentioned that her mother said she bounced back, and although Fisher was unsure if she could describe it as bouncing, they were happy to have her alive. Fisher also noted that her mother has eight grandchildren who adore her. Dog bite. When Connie was 48, she spent time recovering at UCLA Medical Center from surgery for a dog bite infection. During an interview, she disclosed the severity of her condition, explaining that the swelling and infection had reached up to her knee. She recounted how the doctors had warned her that without prompt surgery, if the infection spread above the knee, she might lose her leg. So she agreed to let them operate. A spokesperson from UCLA at the time confirmed that Connie was doing well and expected to be discharged in a few days. Known for her lively stage presence and energetic dance routines, Connie recounted the story of how she got injured. She mentioned that it had happened when she had intervened in a fight between her two huskies in her backyard. 
They're like my children and I couldn't just stand by and watch, she expressed. Describing the sequence of events, Connie remembered that after trying to separate the dogs with a hose, she had been bitten on her right calf as she reached for one of them. She reassured, but he didn't mean it. Right after he bit me, he stopped and looked at his mommy, seeming sorry. After Connie received treatment, including a tetanus shot at UCLA, she eagerly departed for a Caribbean cruise. Goodbye, Connie. On a solemn May 17, 2023, the world bid farewell to Connie Stevens as she took her final bow at 84. Her departure left behind a legacy that will forever echo in the annals of entertainment history. The journey towards this emotional moment began on May 2nd, when Connie found herself confined within the walls of Alliance Medical Center in bustling Los Angeles. Struggling against the grip of a mysterious ailment, she waged a valiant battle for survival over the course of two grueling weeks, her condition veiled in secrecy. The news of Connie's passing sent shockwaves rippling through the hearts of her devoted fans and colleagues. The life and tragic ending of Connie Stevens on social media became a platform for outpouring emotions as heartfelt tributes and fond remembrances flooded the digital landscape. From the depths of sorrow to the heights of admiration, voices from all corners of the entertainment industry united in a symphony of homage. Mark Damon and numerous other actors took to Twitter, struggling to articulate their profound loss at Connie's departure. Among these voices, Jill St. John, a contemporary of Connie, offered a deeply personal reflection on the impact Connie had on their lives and the wider industry. She celebrated Connie as a talented actress, a cherished friend, and a beacon of empathy who touched the lives of millions worldwide. Indeed, Connie Stevens leaves an irreplaceable void reverberating throughout the entertainment world. The heartfelt tribute from Connie Stevens College stands as a testament to the adoration and respect she earned throughout her illustrious career. Her influence on the arts and her lasting imprint on the hearts of her admirers will endure for generations to come. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.